It's back to school vibes for all those kids and parents and teachers, everyone going back to class here today. Yes. And uh, they're all excited about it. Remember those days, getting the backpack all set? I was just going to say, I enjoyed all of my new items, the backpack, the folder, <laughs> and then seeing who was going to be in my classroom. For sure. Right? And your teachers. You that? Yeah. Yes, yes. Good morning to you. Welcome to your Tuesday. Let's go ahead and check in with Netta. I know a lot of the parents are going to be getting up just about mm -hmm. now, yeah. thinking about, okay, what do my kids need to wear to school today? Yeah, what to dress them up in, uh, you know, what lunch they need to go pack and all that good stuff. It kind of depended on what um, grade you were in. I know elementary, junior high, I was super excited. High school, I was like, oh man, I gotta wake up early. <laughs> so it's a little slow to roll when you're going on to high school. Uh, but good morning, everybody. Hopefully, a start to a lovely day for you. It's 6.01 now, and we're looking at a little bit of marine layer action, but not much across the board here. East facing cameras, some of those higher clouds are coming in, a sign of, yes, this right here. Monsoonal moisture, hot and steamy days ahead. That's what we have to deal with. Isolated thunderstorms in our valleys and our mountains and our deserts. Heavy rain is possible today and tomorrow with that likelihood of flash flooding, especially over our mountains. Jenny, good morning to you. Good morning. Speaking of lack of action, uh, not a lot of action out on your roads this morning. 601 travel times are fine. Little bit of an uptick on the tail end of the bridge. This is very minor, but I will point it out to you. Everything else, Chula Vista, South Park area is okay. Construction on Campus Point Drive, North Bond Drive, is closed right at Genesee and then up to the North County you can see that southbound 15 hitting the 78 from Escondido is seeing a little bit of volume but currently no crashes adding to that mess Stella Jenny thank you new this morning an investigation is underway into a suspicious death in City Heights homicide investigators are looking into what happened along Central Avenue near Dwight Street News 8's Evan Ronnie is live there in City Heights with an update for us good morning to you Evan Good morning to you as well. That's right. We are right now on the intersection of Dwight and Central. Uh, just a few minutes ago, they actually reopened Central Avenue where people can now pass through again. However, there are still detectives and uh, San Diego Police Department on scene uh, just around that uh, intersection, just farther down the road here. So what we do know so far is still very limited. But what we've been told is that the call came in just past midnight of a deceased individual. Uh, they are still on scene trying to kind of put together those details. We don't have much beyond that. But again, uh, for a while between about midnight and 4 a.m. Central Avenue was blocked off beyond Dwight Street here in Central uh, in in the City Heights uh, neighborhood. Uh, so beyond that, uh, it's a 3600 block of Central Avenue. We're going to be talking with the sergeant on scene here to see if they can give us any more information. There's been a lot of hearsay surrounding uh, the cause of death or what happened here specifically, but we are still trying to figure that out and bring it to you. So once we get that confirmed, information from the San Diego Police Department will bring it to you. But again, they just reopened the street here, allowing us to be able to go further down on to Central Avenue, which we'll do and uh, try to see if we can get any more confirmed information to you. For now, in the City Heights neighborhood, I'm Evan Irani, News 8. We'll check back in with you soon. Thanks, Evan. This morning, crews are assessing the damage after a car crash into a garage in Point Loma. The crash happened around 2.30 this morning on Santa Barbara Street near Point Loma Avenue. The driver told officers he was tired. Police are looking into whether drugs or alcohol played a role in that crash. Fortunately, no one was hurt. This morning, at least two people are in the hospital after a wrong way crash in La Jolla. So this happened just before midnight along the 5 North near the 52. Witnesses say a woman in a silver sedan was going the wrong way. That woman crashed into a woman in another car. Then that car hit a truck. Both women were taken to the hospital with serious injuries. The driver in the truck was not seriously hurt. A major announcement from the Pentagon, the COVID-19 vaccine may soon be mandatory for all troops. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is asking President Biden to make the vaccine a requirement by September 15th. If any of the vaccines are fully approved by the FDA before then, the president doesn't need to sign off. Military branches have the next several weeks to decide how many vaccine they need, how many vaccines they need, and how this mandate will be implemented. More children are testing positive for COVID-19 across the country. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, over 93,000 cases were reported among kids last week. Data also shows 15% of new cases in the U.S. are among children. Severe illnesses among kids remain uncommon, but some parts of the country are reporting more children in the hospital. Well, today is a big day for thousands of families in the East County. It's the first day of classes in the Grossmont Union High School District. And News 8's Chris Grow is live at Mount Miguel High School in Spring Valley with what families need to know. Good morning, Chris. The calm before the storm. Yeah. <laughs> 
Hey, good morning, Eric and Stella. And look, some of these kids, this might be the first time in a little while that they've been going to in-person learning because this was a hybrid approach in the previous fall. So this is a lot of excitement, maybe even a little bit of nerves for those entering high school for the first time. But still, this is going to be an exciting first day of school for a lot of kids in this high school uh, district. Now, what we do have to address, though, the fact that the coronavirus pandemic is still very much going on and school looks a whole lot different than from when we went to high school or from when even maybe some of these kids were last in classes. Masks are going to be required. They must be worn by everyone when indoors. That's teachers, that's staff, and that is students. Many of the same cleaning protocols are going to be in place from the last September from when they started that in-person learning. And if someone tests positive, they must quarantine along with close contacts. Now, when we last checked the Grossmont Union High School District numbers, only five cases currently at uh, in the district. However, that's before we have these large type of communal gatherings, which of course is going to be class and things like that after school activities. So it is something that we will be keeping an eye on as we move forward. But when speaking with Superintendent Teresa Kemper about the return and how parents and kids are handling, for instance, the wearing of masks indoors and that mandatory nature. She says that she believes the district is handling it well because at the end of the day, they know it's being done for the right reasons. We are very happy that we have the opportunity to have school open. I mean, students who were in person last year wore masks all year, along with many other guidelines. And so we're happy that masks this year allow us to start school in person every day with all students. And there is an independent study option available to students if their parents do choose that. Now, it's not the same as a hybrid model, but it does give them an opportunity to be a little bit more secluded potentially than going back to in-person learning. Eric and Stella. Chris, thank you so much. Okay, hot and muggy today. Yeah, <laughs> That's the sticky. takeaway, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I would say you don't want to necessarily even worry about layering up. If you are getting ready to put on that first day of school outfit, I would say shorts are fine. Of course, you'll want to follow the dress code, whatever those rules are at your school. Uh, but, you know, it's going to be a warm one. It's going to feel fairly humid. Right now, this is the view, Cardiff State Beach. Sorry to all the high schoolers who do have to go to school when you'd rather be here. Uh, but, yeah, you know, this is obviously a popular spot because as it gets so hot for inland valleys. Uh, our surf forecast, two to three foot waves. Uh, the upwelling starting to settle, so that's why temperatures are moving back up. 67 degrees now for our average water temperature, where last week, as we were saying, around 60 degrees. We had that upwelling last week. That's all kind of settling again, and that warmer water will be back. Rip current risk, it's moderate today. We had low tide at 515, so you'll notice it's pretty low right now. High tide will be up to 4.4 feet, closer to noon. Uh, but let's talk about what our skies are doing. Look at that, that red right here shining through those clouds. We're looking at these upper level clouds and our sunrise time in exactly one minute from now at 609. It's a minute later than yesterday. Sunset at 738. And for now, these high clouds are coming in because of this right here. So what's going on in Arizona? A lot of this, that is monsoonal moisture, as you know, and it does bring in those higher clouds and it could make for a nice, pretty sunrise this morning. We'll keep watching those cameras for you. Overall, though, no green popping up here. All of that's happening in Arizona right now where they're dealing with some pretty heavy rainfall. We have the chance for that in Southern California this afternoon. Noon time is when the flash flood watch starts. It lasts until tomorrow at 8 p.m. That includes Southern California mountains to the north of us. Here at home, we're looking at Dr Julian, Pine Valley, Campo. Uh, that's where rainfall could get up to one inch per hour. Small hail, gusty winds, all possible with these thunderstorms that come through. We're all feeling that added moisture in the air, the saturation, the dew points measure that. So when you see dew points over 50 degrees, you feel it's stickier than what we're used to in San Diego. Our temperatures are also in the 60s, 65 Del Mar, although downtown San Diego right now at 70 degrees by this afternoon, you'll get up to about 80 degrees.